Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again, taking a look at making an Antics Live USB. Now I've used the I've, I've had previous videos on making a persistent USB drive, but here I'm just going to take a straight up Windows desktop. I'm on my media box that I use at home for television, and I'm going to make an Antics Live USB stick. Now you need a few things. Obviously, you need a USB. And you're going to need a tool to burn. You're going to need a copy of the ISO. I've got the Antix 13.1 uh, 32-bit version. And you're going to need uh, a tool to make the live USB. I prefer UNet Booten for Windows, and you can get that at uh, UNetBooten.SourceForge.net, and just click Download for Windows. It's very easy to use. There's also another one be called Universal USB Installer, which is at pendrivelinux.com. This is another good option, particularly for a situation I found where UNet booting will not work. I've been having problems lately running into uh, problems lately with large capacity thumb drives, uh, particularly 8 gigabyte SanDisk cruisers. For whatever reason, um, UNet booting's not, they're not showing up in UNet booting. Now they also show up as a local drive in Windows instead of a removable drive, so I, I suppose that's probably part of it. And UNet booting uh, removed its option to force drive entries from their stick, uh, from their interface a while back. That's why I have Universal USB Installer. It still allows oh, I haven't run it yet here we go it still allows you to show all drives and use at your own risk so if UNet booting doesn't work for you uh, does, uh, you can't use doesn't recognize USB drive or if you use some kung, command line kung fu and you force it to burn to a drive I still didn't get a bootable USB uh, with UNet booting uh, on the 8 gigabyte stick. Worked fine on the 4 gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser. Did not work at all on two 8 gigabyte sticks that I tried. So I've got a 4 gigabyte stick right now. I'm going to use UNet Bootin because um, I'm sure they'll get whatever this problem is worked out. You see a lot of people online talking about it. So to use UNet Bootin, and you actually use both tools more or less the same way. There's no real installation. You download the file. I've put them on the desktop so I can find them. And you're going to get a screen, and it's going to say distribution. You don't have to. You can skip this. You've already downloaded the disk image, so you want to click on disk image, and then select your Antics ISO. And as I said, I'm on the desktop, so it's in the desktop folder. And then you want to make sure this is set to your removable drive, and E is my removable drive. Now I did forget one step that I like to do, and as I like to make sure that my disk is my disk is formatted. Uh, here it is, removable disk E. So we're going to format that. I'm just going to do a quick format. FAT32 I found works best with UNet boot. Click start. It's not going to take very long to do a quick format. When they say quick, they mean it. Basically, you're just removing the file allocation table from the disk. Okay, there we go. Format's done. Files are empty. Disk is empty. We're good to go. So USB, drive E, Annex ISO. We're going to click OK. Now let's go and extract files from the ISO into a root file system on the USB key. And this file right here, in Annex's case, Antix slash Linux FS or Linux file system, that is a very big file. It is going to take a long time to copy that file. Depending on your system, I've seen it take up to five minutes to copy that file. On an older system, it could take even longer. I'm talking USB 2.0 speeds here. Uh, if you're trying this on a, on a machine with 1.1, USB 1.1, which it might be if you're trying it on an older computer, this step can take forever. Trust me, it's working. Uh, I'm going to pause my video here uh, and come back when the file system is almost done. Once that file system copies, it is a quick process. As you can see, after the Linux file system booted or uh, copied over, it was 
pretty quick. Okay, so there's the re it's got the reboot now option. Uh, I'm not going to reboot because to show you what's going on, I need to start up my VirtualBox computer with a Plop ISO. Plop is a smart, is a boot manager that allows me to trick VirtualBox, which doesn't usually boot from USB, into booting from a USB drive. That's this ISO right here. I'll put a link in the show notes. So I'm going to boot this up. This is a blank drive. There's no operating system on this virtual box. So you're going to get these starry stars here. That's plop. I need to select the cruiser. And I think we're good. Yeah. So let's we'll select USB. Now we're going to boot from USB. And you're going to see the antics menu. And all the usual antics options are here, including the F2s and F3s, the the language options, the time zones options, miscellaneous options on F4. Uh, you can boot this all the way into RAM, kind of like the old Puppy Linux. It's pretty fast. Also, various mount options to auto mount. You know, just everything if you need to. And also a setting for HP laptops that tend to have their brightness set to zero uh, when after uh, the video driver loads. You'll you'll find that uh, it looks like there's nothing booting when in fact you're fine. Your monitor's just brightness just set to zero. This sets the br monitor brightness to max, so at least you can see it. Uh, F5 is the video mode, so you should stick with default if you can and proceed down the categories until you find one that boots with your hardware. This uses various uh, uh, video options to get your machine running. F6 sets your default desktop. The ROX ICE WM desktop is Anisic's default. I happen to be partial to the space options, space and space flexbox, because the space file manager is the default on those. I'm a big fan of space. I like ROX. It's fast. been using it for years. and I keep it around. They're both available. Uh, no matter what option you pick, space and rocks are both available. And then F7 lets you save um, options, whatever boot options you set on the live USB. Now that's not the same as the persistence options. This is just for the live USB part. You also you can type in the boot line uh, options that if you happen to know options for your computer, you can type them there. Now I've noticed that I have selected static root persistence. I'm going to make sure that I select the default because we have an enabled persistence on this stick. And if you want to enable persistence, you can do that. Uh, you check out my video on live USB persistence. Uh, I think you'll be glad you did. It's pretty neat to have a whole Antics installation uh, with custom applications on a live USB. I've got one set up for all my video editing and media software that I use on the stick. So if I want to reinstall Antics, uh, I get all my stuff uh, without having to pull down the applications all over again. <clears throat> now while this is booting I will tell you that Universal USB Creator will also give you all the antics menus that you expect that we just went over with unit booting. Um, again there's no installation of these. On this one you would select you can select on the menu what antics antics is actually on here someplace um, you can select it or you go all the way to the bottom and hit try unlisted it works fine you browse to your ISO the same way you do with your netboot and then here you'll see um, my drive is actually new so it's not going to show up in the menu but if you if you if you use you netboot and it doesn't and your drive doesn't show up in its menu and you want to try universal USB installer it does have this handy show all drives option and then it will show all drives whether they're removable or not. And you need to be careful and make sure that whatever drive you select is the right one. This did work with my 8 gig SanDisk Cruisers sticks. Um, it worked fine forcing it to those drives. Now forcing it with some command line options in UNET boot did not work and I really don't know why. Um, but this worked just fine. And it gets you the same antics menus. Um, by default. I'm going to cancel and do it because now our, our antic stick is running. You see we now, I'm going to go full screen so you can see it. And there you go. It's a, a nice default version running live 
Uh, if you want to set up persistence, follow, check out my video on that. But uh, there you go. Your Annex is up and running. All right. For tips, tricks, and how-tos, check out annex.mepis.org. For drop a line, if you want to drop a line in the in the forums, head over to antics.freeforums.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.